in many forms. Before I read my prepared remarks, I really want to comment on really what I think the media does sometimes in terms of really trying to portray Republicans as, as hating the poor, that we don't care about the poor. And I think the governor comes from a background that really states that that just isn't true. I come from a similar background. My father's father came from Canada and settled in the small town of Danforth in Washington County. Could speak very little English. Had nine children. Uh, shortly after the birth of the last child, uh, his wife passed away. Could, very, could speak very little English. And, and fed most of his family by shooting probably more than one deer than he was supposed to. Um, and so they did not have an easy life here in Maine. And uh, my father joined the Air Force uh, and then came back to Washington County here in Maine and uh, had some tough times out there. You know, oftentimes working in the woods, cold mornings like this morning, going out trying to start a skitter, putting a fire underneath it, dragging it sometimes to get it jump started. It was a hard living. There were winters sometimes when there wasn't enough money to feed the family. Really, without my father knowing it, my mother went out and got some food stamps at one point in time. And she would go to other communities to buy food for the family, to feed the family. I'm the first in my family, I have four brothers, the first in my family to go to college, very fortunate. I had four brothers who worked very hard, had successful businesses, I'm very proud of them. So Republicans understand poverty, many of us have lived poverty, and these bills are not aimed at hurting or discouraging or disparaging people in poverty. It's about resources and it's about the culture of moving Maine forward, identifying the importance of having a good work ethic, if you're able to it. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank Commissioner Mayhew for her hard work for the reform of the Department of Health and Human Services. The media likes to cling to bad news, but rarely does it speak out to the good. When I was crafting two of these bills, I visited the Office of Family Independence at DHHS and was amazed to hear about the measures being employed to move people from welfare to work. This is a dramatic culture shift taking place at DHHS and it's evident to anyone who speaks with people managing Maine's welfare programs. This is all a reflection of what Maine people want. They want more accountability, less dependency, and a zero tolerance approach to fraud and abuse. We hear it every day when speaking to people on the street, Republican, Democrat, or Independent. Mainers resent the thought of working long hours in multiple jobs just so others can sit at home or abuse the welfare system. It's a matter of fairness, and it's a matter of principle. That's why I introduced two bills to bring some measures of accountability to our programs. One is the work search before welfare measure that would simply require job-ready welfare applicants to apply for three jobs before applying for welfare. The other eliminates exceptions to the work search requirement for those already on the program. Despite the limited and common sense nature of these bills, Democratic leadership prevented them from being allowed into this year's legislative session. I am grateful that we have a governor who is committed to welfare reform and has used his authority to introduce legislation to override the Democratic leaders to make sure these bills get a hearing that they deserve. I cannot emphasize enough that Republican initiatives to reform Maine's welfare system are in no way an attack on the programs of the broad group of people who use them. Unlike many of our opponents of welfare from across the aisle, I grew up poor. I know firsthand the perils of poverty, and I know firsthand how to overcome it. More welfare for able-bodied people is not the way. Governor LePage shares the same background perspective. I'd like to take this opportunity to urge Democratic leaders to stop attacking our motives and listen to what we have to say. People who have never been poor should think twice before accusing Governor LePage or myself of waging a war on the poor. I encourage my Democratic colleagues to heed the words of another leader who grew up in difficult circumstances, President Bill Clinton, who said that welfare should be, quote, 
a second chance, not a way of life, end quote, before signing a landmark national welfare reform bill into law. <coughs> the reality is, we understand that Maine wel Maine's welfare system is broken. We were trying to fix it so that the truly needy, the elderly, the disabled, and the children have the help that they need and deserve. Even though Maine ranks second in the nation for welfare spending, there are thousands of truly needy Mainers going without the help that they need because we have expanded welfare to able-bodied adults again and again while weakening accountability measures within the programs. Again, I'd like to thank Commissioner Mayhew for her hard work, Governor LePage for reintroducing some of these bills along with others, and I'd like to recognize Mayor McDonald for his hard work on the front lines of welfare policy reform in Lewiston. Thank you, and with that, I'd like to introduce Mayor Bob McDonald of Lewiston.